Hi, I'm John Sumner, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Learn to Paint Better. Today's uh, topic of study or subject of study is the lighting condition called low key. In our last episode, we studied high key. And the thing about high key was that we came to know is that the colors are very intense and bright when painting in high key conditions. High key light conditions means a very intense source of light. Today, we're talking about the opposite effect. Today, we're talking about painting in low lighting conditions. And in low lighting conditions, what we're going to find is that the low light will subdue the colors that we're using and grays will be more uh, found more throughout our subject matter. So this is our practice painting. I painted this uh, a while back in prep for this lesson. This is uh, an, an evening scene, uh, fairly late evening, just before the sun's going down. The color, the sun is 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 uh, descending, and the colors are starting to mute. And when the colors mute, we get a lot of grays coming in. <clears throat> so, the opposite of high key, low key, the grays are very dominant. So let's get started. Again, I'll go over my palette with you as I usually do. We always use the palette the same way. We put our white in the largest container, section of the container. Then we have our blues, our reds, our yellows, and an earth color. So our blues are ultramarine and cerulean. Our reds are cadmium red, cadmium orange. Yellows are yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A lot of people don't think that's a yellow, but I do. It works that way when I paint. And an earth tone, raw umber. And again, we're going to be using two brushes today. I have two number eight flat brushes ready. And if you've watched this episode before, we use one flat brush for light colors and one flat brush for darks. Got my water tray ready. <coughs> And you'll notice that I've already toned the canvas. Now, I'm not going to discuss toning the canvas. You can go back in different episodes. In an earlier episode, we have a, a quick tip on toning the canvas. And if you watch that, if you're not sure what we're doing, toning the canvas will, um, will basically unify your painting. But I'm not going to talk a lot about that. We've already toned the canvas so we can get started painting. And in our usual working method, we're going to work from the top of the painting down. So looking at the steady painting, right at the top there, we've got a fairly dark, dark. I'm just going to spritz up my paints. And looks to me like we've got a bit of, I'll go over here, looks to me like we've got a bit of white there. I'm going to pull some raw umber into it. A bit more. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit more. We're going to start in the sky. It looks like we've got this fairly dark cloud at the top of the sky. I'm just roughly following the base print drawing. Now, if this is the first time you've seen us and you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say a base print, you can order base prints in the links below. The reason we use these base prints is to give you basically a set of training wheels. So the design of the painting is already drawn out for you. And it saves you that step of having to draw it in. As you progress later, through our series, you learn to paint better. We are always using a base print. But as we go, we'll delve into the practice of good drawing. And there's a bit more of this dark in here. Again, I'm just scumbling around the base print. 
and I'm loosely following the drawing that I've got there. Just like that. And you may notice already that having toned that canvas down, <coughs> we've already got some really nice uh, grays starting. This, this color is working really well with the tone of the canvas already. And I'm just going to keep working that raw umber white mixture across this section of the sky because it makes a really nice subdued gray. Now right there I got the paint just a little bit too heavy so I'm going to wipe it back. And I think I say this in almost every video. You don't want to get your paint too heavy. You want to let your tone canvas breathe through because it'll make your painting look much more lifelike if you've got that kind of variation happening. One of the things that's happening to me right here is when I mix the paint, the white wasn't properly saturated, wasn't properly mixed with the umber. And I'm getting a bit of what's called frosting. And frosting is where the white stays on the surface and it looks unnatural. So it's really important when you are mixing paint that you try to make sure that you mix it really well in the compartment here so that any white that you're using is really well mixed in right there and then you don't get frosting. So I'm just going to continue scumbling across here. And it comes down in here. There's a lower cloud right about here. Just like that. Oh, and one last one right in here. Okay, so we got that dark established. Now I'm going to continue. I'm going to add, I'm adding now yellow ochre into that mix. And a touch more white. And I'm going to roughly scrub in some of the lighter clouds now, just like that. I think I talk about scumbling on almost every episode. And scumbling is just scrubbing. Just scrubbing in color. And leaving lots of the tone canvas space to breathe and show through. And up here it looks like there's a little bit more white in that same mix. So I'm taking a little bit more white, a little bit more umber. And when I look at the uh, study painting, I can actually see a little bit of green in there showing up. So I think we can add, we can add to this mix just the brush tip of cerulean. Don't give it too much because It'll turn your cloud really green really quickly. Just about that much. And I'm going to come in here and get this cloud here. A little bit more white, I think it needs to be a little lighter. Just going to get this cloud. So using this mix, different mix of colors, we're getting a nice variety of grays. Essentially what grays are, are toned down pure color. That's all gray really is. And grays can have lots of tints or hues. Grays can be on the blue side, they can be on the brown side, they can be on the red side, they can be on the orange side. The important thing to know is when we are using these toned down colors, 
or grays as I like to call them, it's nice to have a variety of them because that'll give your painting some uh, interest, more interest than if you use the same color everywhere. So I'm going to continue moving down. I need to spritz up my palette because it's getting a little dry and I got to keep it wet. And I'm adding more of umber, sorry, I'm adding more ochre into the mix and more white. I'm getting much lighter. And I'm still going to pick up another touch, another touch of that cerulean like that. Because I see a bit of green. And that cerulean is a nice way to make green when you're using ochre. There we go. So I've gradually gotten lighter as I came down. And I'm still just scumbling in. Still allowing some of the background canvas to breathe through, to show through. Because clouds have no real hard edges, you can let some of these two colors run to each, into each other. It won't hurt. And you'll have a nicer transition between one color and the next. there where I want the canvas to be covered. Okay. And we're always going to be the lightest at the horizon, so I'm going to I'm going to pick up a little of each color. I'm picking up the uh, ochre, I'm picking up white and a touch of cerulean. So I think I'm about the lightest point here and I'm going to put that mix pretty much right on the horizon, right through here, so just like that. And I picked up a little bit of a green cast there, but that's okay, that's what I want. And just scrub it across the horizon line like that. There we go. Just coming over those waves a little bit so that they will stand out nicely when we get to them. And I'm just going to scrub in a little bit of this higher just to give it a little bit more variation than I've already got. But essentially we want the lightest light right down at the horizon, which we have. Okay, and that's good for that sky as a start. So we're going to change brushes now from the light brush over to our dark brush. And I want to try and get this, this distant point of land. It's there. It's just very, very, very soft, indicating that it's far off in the distance. So I can see it's green, quite green. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that mix we were using, and I'm going to add a lot more cerulean to it, quite a bit more until I get that weight of color that I can see there. I think that's pretty close. I got to put a touch of raw umber into that mix just to gray it up a bit. That's about where I want to be right there. And let's just go ahead and indicate this distant point of land. It appears that we're kind of looking across a bay here. So I'm just going to scrub it in like that. You just follow the base print. It's going to show you pretty much where that is. Right like that. And in there I kind of let the edge go soft which is a nice effect because it's it's, it's kind of represents that the clouds are coming down onto the tip of the point. And I'm just going to make sure that point's there. Just like that. A 
Okay. So we've got the distant point in place. Now if we look at the um, target painting, the next thing we're going to go to is we're going to work on this dark of the ocean. Now that particular color, that particular color is, is not really opaque, which means at this point it doesn't have a lot of white in it. We're going to put that color on using only water to mix it. So I'm just going to wash out that brush a bit to get rid of that white that I had. And I'm going to try and mix up using only some water that bluey gray, bluey green back there. And the key here is you want to keep your paint consistency about like Kool-Aid. So I'm using both blues, ultramarine and cerulean to try and come up with that mix. That's pretty cool. Now this, it's darker than I can mix with those two blues. So I'm going to add some raw umber to it. A little bit more just to gray it up. Okay, that's about where I want to be. Right there. And you notice that the consistency of this paint is really like Kool-Aid. It's not very thick. I don't have any white, but it's got the right tone. So we're just going to come in behind this, this breaking wave here and start to indicate the distant ocean and just paint it very loosely, leaving a lot of that background canvas to show through. Be very careful in here not to stray into my land, distant point, and also being careful not to come into this brilliant white wave back here. So I'm just kind of just very loosely indicating the distant ocean like that. Now here you want to watch your base print carefully because you don't want to get into this, this wave that's breaking in the front with this wash. So continuing with that wash, it's behind here. One minute. So I'm just going to scrub it in. Like that. Okay, that looks good. We've got to recharge our batteries. So I'll be back in a flash. Okay, we've got some fresh batteries. We can continue. So we're going to continue using that, that blue ocean wash. As I said, it's like, basically at this point, it's a bit like Kool-Aid. Now that was a distant ocean. We're going to come forward and because we're getting closer, the darks are going to get a little bit more intense. So I'm just going to add a lot more blue to that and a little bit more umber. The reason I use the umber is because I don't want the blue too pure. It's got to be fairly grayed down. Okay, and so we're going to, again, I want you to be careful around this breaking wave. We're going to come in with this much darker blue now around here. And you've got to remember to follow the direction, loosely follow the direction of your base print now, like that. Direction is all important in this part of this picture because the waves move in a number of directions. 
And in doing so, they're going to create a pool down here, but everything comes together in that pool from a number of directions. So you have to watch, you look at the target painting. We're moving in this direction and this direction, and now we're going to move in that direction. Actually, I got a little bit more down here. We'll just get that in a bit. Good. Now we got to move in a round direction like that because it's breaking like this now. And to get maximum effect in this painting, you want to be sure that you're following these directions very closely, very closely, because we're going to indicate the simulation of kind of a breaking tide pool in here. I need a little bit more paint, so I'm going to just spray it with water. Pull the ultramarine down into it. Again, the umber, just to gray it off. A little more ultramarine. Now, we've established this direction. These go this way. And you see how loosely I'm just indicating these currents. Just like that. That's the important one right there, right there, and right there. Because you can basically see this huge rush of water coming in front of this wave, moving everything in that direction. Now this continues across, and it breaks across the front of this pool in front of the wave here. It kind of spreads down and across like that. And just be careful on your drawing in here. Make sure you're not getting into that pool, but just indicating this rush of water. It's coming this way. I need a little bit more paint. I just keep adding water. Keep adding water. A little blue, a little umber to maintain that Kool-Aid consistency. I'm watching the target painting just to see the way that the waves are breaking like that. A little bit of that umber showing through, it doesn't matter. It's nice. It's not mixed in, but it's going to give a nice variation. Some darks in that surf. And this is coming kind of this direction now, like that. So everything, every line we make is pointing right here. It's pointing right into this point, right here, where we have a pool underneath that big breaking wave. Need a little more of that mix. So more of the ultramarine and a bit more of the umber. And this color very dramatically is going to accentuate your main wave. So let's get this in here. It's coming this way now. Carefully moving like that through there back behind the crest of the wave, like that. There we go. There you go. All right. So basically, in that step, I just want to be a little careful underneath that wave there. And with that Kool-Aid mix, we use the darks to indicate this incredible flow of water this way, this way. It's coming this way and that way, giving it the sense of a very powerful breaking wave and this churning pool of water in front of it. Now, we got our darks in. That's all I want to do today. Uh, I may just darken, put, put in a little strength in some places with this dark. I've got a little bit left, so I'm just going to strengthen up some things, but not a lot.
particularly where it's very dramatic, right, right beside the breaking wave foam. I'm just going to use up that. There we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We can put our dark brush away. And I'm going to mist up my palette again. And I'm going to come back into this white. So I'm going to go back to my lighter brush. I'm just going to wipe out some of that paint that was in there from before. And I want to go into the, the cresting waves and I want to start to indicate where some of the grays are. So I'm just mixing, I'm mixing right into that white that I had before and automatically I'm getting this very beautiful blue gray. And you should remember when I opened this episode, I said it's about grays because we have subdued light. So we are going to carefully put in some of this gray that's inside. Now that's not, not strong enough. I've got to go darker, so I'm going to pick up some umber, pick up some ultramarine. Uh, you just got to get a gray that's strong enough. This is a bit weak and a bit blue, so I want some more umber in there. Sometimes you mix it up. It looks right on the palette, but when you put it on the canvas, it's not. This is more like it, I think. So I'm going to try indicating some definition in this breaking wave here by picking up some grays. And I'm just loosely scumbling those in, leaving plenty of room for the canvas to breathe through again. just at the base of these breaking waves. Now this is very blue and I got it maybe a bit solid. I'm just going to wipe some of that back. That's better. I'm going to add a touch of umber into that mix because I want to vary the gray. I said you, you like to get as many different grays working for you as you can. And more umber. Like that. There we go. And I'm going to wipe some of that back. that canvas to breathe through. The other benefit of letting your canvas breathe through is you can still see the base print drawing there which we'll need a bit later when we start to finish the painting in the next episode. This of course is the underpainting. Good. And I'm using this slightly different gray on top of what I've got. So I get some nice variation in there. Being careful not to saturate the canvas with paint because we won't have that openness that we want. There, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to run that color in some of these light spots that I've got down here. There's some back here. So just pick up some of these light spots that we've got going. We can get some of it in here, underneath the wave, and out here. And I'm just scrubbing in there like that. And the reason I'm doing it is because I want to make sure that these, these lights are not as white as the crests that are going to be on my wave. So to make these brighter, I've got to make these lights a bit darker. And I'm going to indicate some of that back here in this wave that's cresting as well, like that. Wiping back, good. 
The nice thing about when you're wiping back is <laughs> you get all kinds of interesting uh, variations on your surface that you're wiping back. And <clears throat> if you just leave them alone, they'll give you that sense of randomness that nature has. <clears throat> Sometimes <clears throat> our brain tends to look for order and we paint and patterns and we paint patterns and it's kind of the uh, it kind of counterintuitive to good painting so try not to paint patterns try to be random as you can and one of the ways to get random is just use your balled up paper towel wipe something out and let it be because that'll be very random <clears throat> okay now there's a third color in this um, huge wave that's breaking and it's this kind of really nice soft green. So let's try and mix that up. I'll go over here. So I'm going to pull some blues into this white tray I've got here. And if I add some yellows and some white, I'm going to start to get that green. And I think I need a lot of cerulean in this and yellow ochre and white. Those three colors. Now this is grayer than I want it to be, but it's a nice color. Keep putting that yellow in it and cerulean and ultramarine. Those three I'm going to get this kind of nice color here. I think I'm pretty close. Actually, it's pretty gray. I'm going to add more yellow. I'm pretty close right in there. And if you're never sure, just kind of test, your, test a little bit on your canvas. <coughs> yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's just kind of indicate some variations in the top of this breaking wave with this new color, like that. Just like that. And it looks like it's kind of running down, down into this color a bit. So we want to do that. Let them blend together as much as you can. Good. And I'm going to continue that color <coughs> into this part of the surf. I'm going to pick that color into some of those white spots that are open and quite a bit of it into this area just below the wave that's broken already. Like that. Now that's a bit too much paint there. I'm just going to wipe that back. Good. In here we want to make sure that we're maintaining the direction that we've set. The directions are very important of the waves. It's very important here to get really nice continuity or sense of design in your picture by maintaining the correct directions. Everything's coming together on this point here. We can use a bit of this out here where it's really white. And it's just going to tie your picture together nicely. I want that to be a little darker in there. And we can use some of it in here, too. So just blend those into the white areas. Not all of them, but some of them. Just wherever you think it's appropriate, just throw a bit of that color in. And similarly, we can do the same thing down here. But again, I'm maintaining that direction. And this picture, everything's coming to this point. I think a bit in here like this. Good. I'm just wiping back a few places where I think the paint's a little bit too solid, like that. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with, with what I've got here. I'm going to wash that color out. And now we'll put in some fireworks because we kept because we kept 
our lights, light areas toned down, tinted down, now when we put on a real bright white, it's going to stand right up. So I'm just picking up white. I'm going to pick white up in that same area. I'm just going to mix a little bit of it into that last mix. And I'm going to start to indicate the foam on these waves like this. Try and be careful with your base print here and be faithful to it because it's going to help you keep the right design here when you're just putting that white in like that. And just indicate those waves like that. Just a very slight flick of the wrist and pick some of that white into these areas that are exposed here. You notice that it gives a very nice contrast now. It's working against your grays that we set up. We set up these really nice grays and now the white's just highlighted on top. Back in this distant wave, there's a few of these really white highlights. And I want to try and get it right on that, right above that uh, horizon line there. I want that color to break the horizon line. Like that. Looks good. Back up here, this wave is also breaking up through the, through the horizon line. And we're just loosely indicating those, the pattern of those breaking waves like that. Remember direction here. I talk about direction. It's working this way. So make sure your strokes are consistent with that direction. And a little bit goes off there like that. Good. One minute. Okay. And finally, well, maybe I'll do that in the next segment. I'm just going to take a five minute break while we charge our batteries and I'll be back. All right. So I'm going to continue working with this white. Just remember, wherever I'm putting it is consistent with the direction that's already been established by the earlier lights. I'm just putting some of this in where I think it should be. Some breaking there and in here. And in the bottom here. Just pulling out the, I'm just pulling out the foam there. I'm just going to bring this forward a little bit and up so we can get right at the bottom. There we go. That's better. Just giving indicators. This is where my painting is going. This is where I want your eye to go, here. And I'm reinforcing that direction with the white now. There we go. And maybe there's some really bright whites there. I'm picking up a bit purer white than I had before. Just like that. And maybe right there. Okay, I think that's it. So we've covered the entire painting. Um, if you compare the two, we have a fairly close underpainting to the target painting. I can see that already some of the values have dried. They've changed because the darks have dried back a bit. And they're not strong enough compared to the target painting or the subject painting now. And we don't have quite the same contrast as we had. And this is typical with acrylic. Acrylic will dry back. And that's why we do it in two steps. We do an underpainting first. We let it dry. We come back. And then we adjust the values and do the finished painting.
But this looks pretty good to me. Um, it's a pretty good start for an underpainting, I think. It looks uh, uh, very dramatic with the water moving. This is low light, and in low light, we've got all these subdued colors. These are really subdued colors uh, that are working together to give you this very kind of nice and dramatic effect. So I think that's it for today. Low light, the underpainting is finished. Come back in the next episode. We'll finish this painting. We'll get it as close to that as we can. In the meantime, I, I thank you for coming, and I hope you'll like my page and subscribe to my videos. I'm John Sumner for Learn to Paint Better. See you next time.